Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I wanted to do something a little bit different this time. And I've had a lot of people ask me about processing and how I process my images. And uh, I've noticed that a lot of people, through looking at hundreds of images every day on Instagram, seem to struggle a little bit when it comes to processing, particularly when you're new at this hobby and just learning. And if you're like me, you never used Photoshop before, it can be a little bit overwhelming and intimidating. So hopefully this video will help. I'm gonna keep it super simple. You're going to see, by the way, I, I do things. I'm not exactly a professional when it comes to Photoshop. I don't maybe do it the way guys who have been doing this a long time have, but I get decent results and hopefully I can help those who are newer and struggling with this aspect of the hobby. Because as I mentioned, collecting good data is key and without it, you know, you're going to be limited in the results you can achieve. But at the same time, then you need to be able to process that data. I find a lot of guys seem to struggle a little bit and um, hopefully this video will be simple enough uh, that I'll be able to show each step that I do. I'm not going to go super crazy with the details, but just to give you a, a nice base image to work from. And then, you know, if you want to go a little bit more crazy, a little more detailed, you can do that. But this will hopefully show you the basics and basically a, an overview of processing and how I do that when it comes to a mission. Area. So I've chosen the horse head and flame. Nebula, a very popular target, and in this case, uh, I've shot it three and a half hours worth. This is my stacked TIFF image. So this is basically right out of Deep Sky Stacker. This is what it looks like. You see not much. You see some stars. You can see a little bit of the flame here, a little bit of the horse head, but otherwise not a lot to see. So it just goes to show why processing is so important. This is basically what you get after three and a half hours worth of imaging and once you stack it all together. So this was shot with my Sharp Star 76 millimeter. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I had that on the Skywatcher Star Adventure. So no professional mounts here, no high-end mounts. This is just a star tracker. 60 second unguided exposures. And I've been I was using the Optolong L Extreme filter. And you've heard me mention that many times and go on about how important a good quality narrowband filter is. So I'm hoping to show that with this video and the results you can get. This was shot in Boro 9 Toronto. So basically the worst conditions, sky conditions you can get. But you'll see you're still able to get pretty good results with the right filter and the right processing. So hopefully I can show that to you. And I'm gonna go as quick as I can, but I want to make sure that you understand each step. You know, I've watched too many videos where they just fly through assuming you know this and you know you have to continually stop and rewind and I don't want it to be the case with this video. So I'm going to go through step by step, get a good base image, and then you can take it from there and go as detailed as you want, but you'll be able to get decent results with just these few steps. So basically I start by stretching the image, and by stretching it we're going to bring out that color, bring out that detail, and then as we stretch we're going to trim, and we're going to trim what we don't want, the data that really has no color in it, no detail. And by doing that we start to really bring out a nice bright image. So I'll show you how I do that. So I begin by going to image adjustments, and then we go to curves. You notice know, it brings this box. So here's all our data right here. It's all the way over to the left. And watch as we go step by step, this will start to move out and get wider. And that's what we want. So to begin, I just do a sort of moderate stretch, not, nothing too crazy. Something like that. Press OK. And already you can see there's the horse head, there's the flame, and you can see more stars already. And also, I really started to highlight this here. This block is from um, alignment issues when it came to uh, capturing this image over multiple nights, and it wasn't exactly lined up the same both nights. And that's pretty standard. You're usually going to get a little bit of that, and uh, it's nothing to worry about. You know, we have a lot of room here to work with. But now that I've done that initial stretch, I can just do a quick crop <clears throat> to remove that. All I'm going to do is bring it in. From one corner and then the other. Just do a rough crop to center it up. And there we go. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit where it's, you see at the bottom up there 16.67. Let's go up to 20. That's much better. All right. So I'm going to do another quick stretch. Go again, adjustments, curves. And you can see already our data's, data's come all the way up from the edge to here. We've already made a bit of progress. And again, nothing crazy. You see, if you go too high, obviously it gets blown out, overexposed. 
And what I do is with this one in particular, I keep my eye on the flame nebula here. That's a, a lot brighter than even the horse head. So it's going to be more uh, susceptible to being blown out and overexposed. So that's what I keep my eye on as I stretch, that it's not going too far. So I'd rather do it gradually than, you know, in just one or two steps. So there's another little stretch. Press OK. Just going to select the entire image. Now we're going to trim a little bit. So we've you can see how bright it and washed out it looks. We've brought some of that color out. And now we're going to trim. So in order to trim, we sort of go to image adjustments and instead of curves we go to levels and here here's our data here again and you see how much room we have here this is what we want to trim there's really nothing here and it's just adding to that washed out look so what we do is we bring the slider in from the side and bring it over we don't want to go right over you see when we go into the white now we're actually cutting out the nebula itself we want to bring this close as possible so let's say somewhere around 30 and we press ok so already we got a little bit of a darker image. So now that we've trimmed, we go back to stretching. So adjustments, image, adjustments, curves. And we're going to bring that up a little bit more, not too much. Press OK. Now we're going to trim again. So image, adjustments, levels. And you can see we still have room a little bit less than last time. But we'll bring that right up against the data, so 11, that's okay. You can see the image already starting. Now you can clearly see the horse head here and the flame on the left. So we're going to stretch again. Image adjustments, curves. You can see our data is getting wider as we go as well. So we'll just do a, another minor stretch. That looks okay. One thing to notice. As you stretch two or three times, you see the sky here starts to get pretty yellowy, greeny yellowy, and that's that's pretty common. So here's a key tip on how to fix that. So now that we've done another stretch, we're going to trim again. So image adjustments, levels. And you see we have very little room to work with here. So we're going to bring as far as we can. So let's leave it at maybe four, let's go to five. But it's still quite green. So what you do is, you click on this sampler here, the middle one, okay, and there you see it on the screen. And what you want to do is click somewhere on the background, so not in the nebula here, but you want to click somewhere in the space area here. And I'll show you what I mean. Click, see, right away that went away. And depending where you click, you'll get a little bit of a different tone. That one's a little more dark and red. Um, that one's really red. That one's nice sometimes you'll get a little bit more blue depending where you click there one that one's a little bit more blue so see what you like um for me i like lots of nebulosity that's a little too much that's okay we'll go with that one so now you see when we did that we have a little bit more room to play with here so we're going to move that slider over just a little bit more to let's say 10 and press ok there you go, and already we have a nice image here. <clears throat> we have the nebulas popping out, the stars are coming out as well, and we got rid of that awful creamy yellow tinge. So let's do one more stretch. Let's see if we can get away with it here. So again, image adjustments, curves. You see that's a bit too much if we're looking at the flames, so bring that down. That should be good. Okay. And we'll do one last trim. Adjustments, levels. And we got a little bit of room to play with here. All right. So there we go. Now, something you're probably noticing. It's quite washed out at the bottom and dark in this corner. So that's something that you tend to get, particularly in light pollution. You get that sort of grating in the background. That's always a challenge to to deal with. And for that, I use a, an extension. Now you have to. It's not something that comes with Photoshop. You have to pay for it. It's not overly expensive, sixty-seven dollars, I think. Um, but I highly recommend it. There are other ways to get rid of gradient. There's videos on that, but they're a little more technical, a little more challenging. Definitely a lot more work. So for me, I say pay the money. 
by the extension, you only have to pay for once and you can use it over and over on hundreds of images. So let me show you how I do that. So basically, once you've uh, installed the extension, you go to filter. Now it's made by RC Astro, you see it here, and it's called the Gradient Exterminator. So we'll click on that. And there is a gradient, but it's not, you know, crazy bad. So we're going to leave it at medium. We leave that unchecked, balance the, back, the back, background color, and we hit OK. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see it's a lot more balanced. It's still dark here, but that's the way the horse head is, I find anyway. Um, there's a lot less nebulosity in that area, um, at least with only three and a half hours worth of exposure. So overall, it's a much balanced, more balanced picture. So I'm happy with that. And that's the sort of the purpose of that extension. It really does a great job on all, um, I'd say 95% of the time. So at this point, we have sort of a nice base. And what, it, what you can just do to keep it really super simple is just go to Image, Auto Color. Look at that. Look how much that popped. You already have basically an image just with that one big step. Um, so that already looks great. But then you can also try in, uh, go, ahead and go on the Image, try Auto Tone. So see if you like that. I like the red. Myself personally, this is an area in Orion that's full of nebulosity. If you've ever seen a really wide field image of this with Orion itself in it, it's just full of gas, and I like it. I think that's beautiful. So for me, I like that. I'm going to leave it. I'm even going to try image auto tone. It generally doesn't do as much, just a touch. Now that looks good to me. So we're off to a good start here. We've just done a few steps, a couple of minutes, and we're already at this point. And the key is for me, I like to keep this sort of soft view. You see, you see, or you already see sort of flowing gas, um, not too much hard lines or anything like that. I like to try and maintain that. And you'll see that as I do the next few steps. I'm just going to zoom this in a little bit more. I cropped it more than I thought I would, but that's okay. So now I'm going to address the, the stars. Now, some people might just leave it as is, and there's nothing wrong with it. These stars are decent. You know, you got to remember I'm using a star tracker um, with a fairly heavy telescope on it. So you're never going to get perfect stars. They're, in my opinion, they're, they're more than acceptable. They're definitely round. They're, you know, a little bit oval shaped, but that's pretty much what you get with a, a cheaper star tracker and a simple setup. But to me, an unguided particularly. So for me, it's uh, it still looks great and I'm happy to work with that. So I'm not gonna go too crazy with it, but I do like to reduce them a little bit. I like to have the nebula sort of stand out a little bit more. So I'll reduce these stars, and the key way to do that is I go to Filter, Noise, and then I use Dust and Scratches for the most part. Now, the threshold I don't generally touch too much, but the radius here is where you'll really see the difference. So if you were to go crazy with this, say put in 15, just to show you, you can see there, too much. It did get rid of the stars, but you know, barely even looks like a horse head anymore, and it just looks too washed out. So I'm going to edit, undo that. And there's the stars again. We're going to go filter, noise, dust and scratches, and let's try 5 instead of 15. And that looks nice. So just to show you, edit, undo. You see all those little stars that reappear? Edit, redo. Just cleans it up a little bit. I mean, you can go six or seven and, and be even more aggressive, but to me, that's that's enough, and it, and it made enough of a difference. Now, the other thing I like to do is just sort of select each star and then just do a, a slight uh, minimize on them, just to bring them down a little bit more, help keep them round. And, um, you know, that's something that's quite common when guys do uh, a star reduction. They'll do this process. So to do that, I go to select color range it brings up an image here and you see the little sampler i have on the screen i pick like a medium sized star click on it didn't really adjust as much it's basically you can see it's selected all the medium to large size stars and that's what we wanted these these little ones here that's not going to do anything we don't need to worry about those so that looks good you press ok and now you can see it's selected the stars but you also notice it's not really um, selected the entire star. It's kind of cutting it off a bit. So we want to expand that select all 
that select color range, I mean, and just to get the entire star. So to do that, we go to select, modify, and expand. So that's just going to expand those circles. I usually do two or three pixels. So in this case, I'll do expand by three. Okay. And it just made it a little bit bigger. So now to minimize. So we've got our star selected. We go to filter, other, minimum. And again, we get a similar screen of the dust and scratches with one, uh, one bar here for adjustment. So generally I like to keep it under two. What happens is we get too aggressive and the higher the number, the more aggressive. You start to get really um, sort of halos and, and sharp lines on your stars and they no longer look natural. So you don't want to go too crazy with this. That's why I'd rather do a lot of the work with dust and scratches and just use this to finish it off. So usually I'll go somewhere around 1.6, 1.8. Let's see what 1.6 looks like. And it's just going to be a minor adjustment, nothing major. Click off that. Yeah, that looks good. They're just a little bit smaller and maintain the roundness. And it looks nice. I'm definitely happy with that. So that's good. So there we go. So we've brought out our nebula. We've balanced the, the background. We've reduced our stars a little bit. Now we're going to work on the more finer details. And in order to do that, I go to filter, camera raw filter, and here's where you'll get a lot of your, you know, sort of finer adjustments. Kind of looks similar to what you adjust on, like Instagram. You have your 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 color balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, all that stuff. And this is where you can sort of, you know, make it your own and, and do whatever you prefer when it comes to this editing. Of course, it's all up to taste, right? Whatever you like. You do, but as I mentioned, I try to keep it soft with nice details, you know, sort of balance those two things together. So color balance, I don't really touch too much. I'm happy with the way it looks, but just to show you, you know, you can go blue, you can go more yellow. I'm going to keep it at zero. And then you can tint to greenish or purple. But again, I like the way it look. I'm going to leave it at zero. Exposure, I don't generally fool around with too much. Maybe a touch. Sometimes I'll go like 0.05 just to brighten it up. It'll go, yeah, 0.5, that looks good. Contrast, you know, play around with it. If you go down, you see a lot more gas around the horse head and flame. If you bring it up into the positives, you get a lot less. I like, as I mentioned, a lot of gas in my pictures, so I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Let's say you're in minus 10 and highlights. Here's where you'll see the gas itself sort of really come to life. You see there right around the horse head and the plane, see how it gets nice and bright and pops. That's what I like. So I'm going to move that highlight up quite a bit, maybe around 40. And then the shadows here you can play with, see what you like. How bright do you want it to be? I'm going to go again a little bit above zero. I like the way that looks. I go to plus 10. Now white is uh, something you want to be careful with. You see if you go too high, it starts to get a little bit oversaturated and um, it looks a little bit unnatural. So for me, don't really play around with the whites too much. Just a touch, maybe, maybe plus 5. And then your blacks. So blacks, again, you can get rid of all that gas around it or you can bring more of it out. I'm happy with the way it is. I'm maybe just going to go plus three and we'll leave it at that. So I'm going to press OK. I don't like to do too many adjustments already. You can see how that came out even more. I don't like to do too many adjustments at once. I don't do it in layers, as you probably can tell. Most guys do. I was never, I never learned to do that. Um, and I find if you just do it in steps, it's not really necessary. And just for the sake of keeping things simple, I want to show you this way. So that's why I don't do too many steps at once. And that way, if I'm not happy with something, I can go back and undo it. So let's go back to filter, camera raw filter. So we've adjusted these already. We're going to move down to these three here, texture, clarity, and dehaze. So texture, you'll see, if you bring it all the way up, it's kind of like the structure tab in Instagram, where you get really detailed 
um, aspects of your picture, but it gets a little bit crispy for me, a little too much. You see the horse head looks nice and sharp, but everything else looks unnatural. So I actually like to balance this out. I like to go a little bit in the negatives with your texture, so you get a nice soft feel, like minus three. You see it's nice and soft here. And then I bring the clarity up to sort of offset it. Not too much, but you know, maybe somewhere around 40, 41. So you get that soft feel, but you also get that, those details. And then dehaze is good for, again, either more gas or less. I'm going to go slightly in the negatives. That's a little too much, but maybe somewhere around minus five. That looks good to me. All right, I'm going to hit OK again. See the changes. Not crazy, but just a little bit more enhancements. And then I'm going to go one, well, not one more time. We're going to go two more times probably, but I'll go filter, raw cam camera raw filter. And we'll adjust the vibrance and saturation, but I generally don't touch it too much. Vibrance is one of those things I find people go a little overboard in my opinion. So I might just go plus one or two. And then saturation is another one. Like, you know, how many images have you seen like this? Where they just sort of ruined all those nice details by going too far. Or, you know, you go too too far down and then you get no color at all. So I'm going to leave saturation just as it is. Hit OK. All right. There's some more minor adjustments. And one last time, we're going to go into filter, camera raw filter. So we've been working here, you see up to this far, this left tab, it's called basic, but we're going to go to the third one from the left. It's called detail. So click on that. And here's where we get our sharpening and noise reduction. So sharpening, you got to be careful. You don't want to over sharpen. Um, it's not so bad in Y field, but you notice it for things like galaxies and of course, I'm getting pop-ups now. You want to just sort of do a little bit of sharpening. I like to do somewhere around 10 to 15. And then we go to our luminance. This is where we sort of, again, soften it a little bit, remove some of that noise. If you go too far, you see it gets a little bit sort of just washed out and too soft. So I just do a little bit, probably about 12 or 13, and then I sort of adjust it again, balance it out with luminance detail, and I bring that right up. Because you've already softened it, and now we're going to bring more detail. So I'll bring that right up to 90. Bring up our luminance contrast a little bit. And that looks good. So let's hit OK. And there it is. Already we have a beautiful image. And how long did that take? Not very long. So a couple of things you might notice. Here we have a bit of a funny line. I didn't crop it enough. That's part of our probably alignment issues between the two nights. So I'm going to crop that, sort of do a final crop on this image. So bring that in. And I might just bring this in a little bit to make it less of a rectangle. Let's see what that looks like. That looks nice. Beautiful. So at this point, We've done all the basics. We have a nice picture. But what I like to do is I like to work on this flame nebula a little bit. It's already a little more orange, but I like to make that pop a little bit. I mean, after all, it's called the flame. You want it to look like it's on fire, like it's almost backlit. And I also like to try to make it a little bit less red so that it stands out as different from the horse and nebula. Because technically, these are two different nebula. So what I'll do is come over to the left here. You see the lasso icon. And I'll just quickly draw around it, just like that. Now, I want to mention one thing. As I've drawn around it, you can see it's up at the top here. It says feather. You want this to feather out the adjustments you're making. You don't want it to be a hard line. So I like to go somewhere around 40, 45. Um, so just make sure that that's adjusted. You don't want that to be a zero because you don't want it to be super obvious that you worked on just this part of the image because when you do a lasso like this, all it's doing is working on what you've lassoed. So whatever changes you make, it's not going to affect the rest of the picture. So we're, we're um, sort of soloing it out. So I'm going to go up to filter and go back to camera raw filter. And usually there's a nice close up of the flame. I like to adjust the highlights and watch what happens. You see how it sort of almost looks like it's on fire now. I like that look for me. That's what makes it sort of pop. So I'm not going to look too crazy, but maybe around 45. 
That looks good. Let's just see what the whites does. Yeah, a little bit. We won't go too crazy with that. 30. That's okay. And there it is. And then we'll just select all. See, a little bit of detail there. It makes just that little bit of difference makes that picture pop even more. And that looks nice. And you can, you know, as I mentioned, this is just an overview, but you can sit here and sort of lasso, you know, all this and, and try to make this pop out the way you want. Um, you can go to town. So I'll leave that up to you. That's obviously up to your personal taste. But I think already we have a nice image here that uh, has come a long way from that stacked image we started with. You can also sort of make adjustments to the entire image. If you go to um, image adjustments, a lot of these are very similar. But there are some things like, say, I'm trying to think here, hue and saturation. See, lightness, that's something that's not really on uh, the camera raw editing, editing. So you can do that. I would, you know, be careful what you do here. But you might want to go plus one or, or maybe even just under. Kind of looks nice too. Maybe I'll go minus one just to take a little bit of edge off it. You can also play with the hue if you like funky colors. Yellow, you know, purple, blue. I'm not into that myself. I like to keep it more natural. So I'm going to leave that alone. But just, you can play around with these things. There's, there's also like photo filters, stuff like that. Um, I don't like to go too crazy with this. I do most of that work in the camera raw filter. But, you know, just so you know, there are there are options there as well. The other thing I want to mention is, uh, say you have like a little bit of dust on your sensor and you get these sort of blotches throughout. This is where you use the healing brush here. It's just on the left. You see it here. You can adjust the size by going uh, to this tab right here. There's not only the size. You can see how much bigger it is, but also you can adjust the hardness. I would not suggest going all the way to 100, but somewhere around 75, 80 is always good. So this is at 103. It's a little bit big. I'm going to bring it down. 93. That's good. So click off. Yep. So I'm just going to show you. I don't really have any dust on this particular image to remove. I had cleaned my sensor before I did this, but say for me, sometimes I like to delete some of the stars that are right on top of the nebula. I know some guys that makes them angry, but uh, I'm all about the nebula. You know, these aren't for uh, studying science. These are for pretty pictures. So it doesn't bother me. So what you do is, so say you want to block, you want to cover this star, you know, it's covering your nebula and you want to get rid of it. So what you do is you just hover right next to it to an area you want to sample. You hit um, the alt key and the mouse. And so, so now you've sampled that. So when you hover over the star, you see, it's the same color as the area you just sampled. So you just hover over, hit your mouse, and there it is. You can't even tell you did that. And you can do that anywhere. And if you're going to do it more in here, then you'd want to sample there. So now you can see I'm sampling, you know, a little bit of the more orangey nebula. And you can do the same in the background. Sometimes you get, for some reason, a really quirky star or one that's not quite as round or one that you really like and you want to replace others with it, you can even do that. So say this star, you really like it, hover over it, Alt, click on it. Now you see it there and you can replace another star with it. Or you can click next to a star, Alt, click and just delete. It. Or as I mentioned, any other imperfection. So that's a nice little tool to have. Um, I'll show you again here in the nebula, Alt, click, and then just click over it and it's gone. You can't even tell. So that's a nice little tip as well. I mean, it's quite common to get dust on your sensor. So that's generally what I use it for most, but sometimes I'll just clean up the stars a little myself. And, uh, you know, that way the nebula really pops out. So that's basically it, guys. I just want to point out a couple things. As I've mentioned, this Optolong Alextreme is an amazing filter. You know, look at the results you're able to get. This is Boral 9, three and a half hours using a star tracker. A lot of color, a lot of detail. But you will notice the stars, they don't have much color. You lose out that natural color. It's just too harsh of a filter. And unfortunately, that's one of the, the drawbacks of it. But for me, it's worth it. You know, I'm able to, I think I even shot one night of this on a full moon. Um, and just to be able to get this detail from my conditions, to me, it's worth it.
Also, this here is actually a, a reflection nebula. You'll see in some pictures where they're shot from darker skies and a lot longer exposures. This is actually a nice little blue nebula, reflection nebula. But because of the, the harsh filter that it was using, it sort of blocks a lot of that light out. So there are some trade-offs, but overall, you get a very pretty picture, as you can see. And, uh, you know, this is basically ready to, ready to go. What I generally do, though, is I take an image like this. I save it, okay, um, usually as a JPEG, and then I'll send it to my phone, however way you want to do that. Usually I just email it to myself, and then I open it up on my phone, and then what I do is I open it, I download um, Photoshop Express. So it's not as detailed as a, a, a program. You, you can't do stretching on it and stuff like that, but it, it has all those minor adjustments, and I adjust it according to the screen of my phone before I, I share it, say, on Instagram or whatever. So I save it to a JPEG, send it to my phone, and then I open up my phone and I make more minor adjustments on um, Photoshop Express. And here's a picture of, you know, this image that I had edited prior and the final product after I put it through Photoshop Express and then onto Instagram. So you can see a little more detail, a little more, you know, detail in this ridge here, stuff like that, but very similar. And, you know, you have a beautiful picture even without doing that. So not something you have to do. But I like to do that. I, I prefer to use something like Photoshop Express instead of just sending it right to Instagram and using their um, sort of crappy editing uh, tools that they give you. I mean, it's not bad, but it's better to use a, a professional program like Photoshop Express. So that's it, guys. Hopefully that was a good overview for you, how I am edit my images. I mean, obviously it's a little bit different depending on the type of target. If it's, you know, Reflection Nebula, it's similar, but you're going to do a few things different. And galaxies are really challenging particularly from, from Bortle 9, like I'm shooting from. So I'll hopefully do a little video on that and some of the issues you run into when it comes to galaxies and doing heavy crops. This is definitely one of the easier targets to do, but I thought it'd be a good choice just to give you an overview and hopefully you learned a few things. So thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.